take it away. Just be mindful of my books. Yeah, that's, that's for me.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray from me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words. He said, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no gods except me. You shall not make yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything in heaven or on earth beneath or in the waters under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, and I punish the father's fault in the sons, the grandsons and the great-grandsons of those who hate me. But I show kindness to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not utter the name of the Lord your God to misuse it, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the man who utters his name to misuse it. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath for the Lord your God. You shall do no work that day, neither you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your servants, men or women, nor your animals, nor the stranger who lives with you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea, 
and all that this hold. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it sacred. Honor your father and your mother so that you may have a long life in the land that the Lord your God has given it to you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his servant, man or woman, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is his. The word of the Lord. The second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. While the Jews demand miracles and the Greeks look for wisdom, here are we preaching a crucified Christ. To the Jews, an obstacle that they cannot get over, to the pagans, madness. But to those who have been called, whether they are Jews or Greeks, a Christ who is the power and wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, before the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and in the temple he found people selling cattle and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting at their counters there. Making a whip out of some cord, he drove them all out of the temple, cattle and sheep as well, scattered the money changers' coins, knocked their tables over, and said to the pigeon sellers, take all this out of here and stop turning my father's house into a market. Then his disciples remembers, remembered the words of the scriptures, zeal for your house will devour me. The Jews interfered, intervened and said, what sign can you show us to justify what you have done? Jesus answered, Destroy this sanctuary, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jewish replied, It has taken 46 years to build this sanctuary, and you are going to raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the sanctuary that was his body. And when Jesus rose from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the words he had said. During his stay in Jerusalem for the Passover, many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he gave. But Jesus knew them all and did not trust himself to them. He never needed evidence about any man, he could tell what a man had in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters in Christ, for the Gospel of the third Sunday in Lent, we are presented with a side of Jesus which we aren't very familiar with. We have a side of Jesus that we don't read about a lot. We hear of Jesus who is angry and very angry at that. Over the millennia, we've found there's many artworks that depict uh, different sides of Jesus, different accounts within the gospel, and usually these accounts present Jesus as meek and mild, gentle of heart. Take, for example, the very famous image of the Good Shepherd. You have the sheep wrapped around the shoulders of Jesus, and Jesus carrying that sheep back towards the flock. And so when you hear of Jesus who is angry, it's somewhat strange. But what we hear in our gospel is that Jesus isn't just angry, he's furious, absolutely furious. What does it say? Making a whip out of some cord, he drove them out, all out of the temple, cattle and sheep as well, scattered the money changers, coins, knocked their tables over and said to the pigeon sellers, take all this out of here and stop turning my father's house into a market. He is absolutely furious. If there's any account I would love to be a fly in the wall, it's this, so I can measure how much I can get angry. Nonetheless, it's a very interesting passage. But why is he angry? Why is he so furious at what is happening there in the temple? What you find, actually, is that his anger, when you delve deeper, which we will do, 
actually provides another lesson in our preparation towards the Paschal Mystery, the Paschal Mystery which we will celebrate in only a few weeks' time. So let's go deeper. What's actually going on in this particular Gospel? St. Mark begins his Gospel today saying, just before the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, it is Passover time. Passover was the time when people would actually come from all the surrounding nations. Jews would all come, come to Jerusalem to provide their sacrifice. And so this is a very, very busy time. Jews were expected to make this journey, and so far and wide they came to offer their sacrifices. Now, the sacrifice that one, that one make depended on how much wealth you actually had. So here, St. Mark also talks about how there was cattle and sheep and there were pigeons. In the Gospel of Luke, for the Nativity story, you find that, Jesus, that the parents of Jesus offer two turtle doves because they are poor. If you are more wealthy, you will offer a cattle. If you are poorer, you offer a pigeon. Now, you had to make an offering. But if you've come from far and wide, it's pretty difficult to bring your offering, especially if you're quite wealthy, dragging a cow. It's pretty difficult. And so, to make things somewhat practical for the people, the temple authorities thought it best to provide a very small market so people could actually buy their livestock, buy their offering, then and there. So it's a very practical thing to do. Now that's not so much of an issue because we have to keep in mind that the temple was sectioned off. They weren't selling the actual livestock in the heart of the temple, the Holy of Holies. That would be blasphemy. They were selling it in the court of the Gentiles, which was actually one of the courtyards outside of the temple. That isn't the issue. The issue isn't that they're selling this livestock. The issue has come about of the mentality that has changed with these temple authorities. Rather than providing it as a practical way for those who have come far and wide, they have now started making a bit too much coin on the actual transaction. It's no longer about temple worship. It's no longer about the actual Passover itself. It's how, what can I get out of this person who has traveled from the surrounding nations to make their offerings? And there's a great emphasis on here on the money changes coins knocked over their tables. Because Jesus is seeing this as an absolute abuse on the most holy of festivities, the Passover itself. The issue here, as I said, isn't the exchange. The issue here is reverence. What was the temple? The temple was where they encountered God, where they made their offerings to God on behalf of them to worship, to reprimand their sins, to give us an offering, to make a peace offering to another person. That was where they worshiped. That was where they encountered God. And they are no longer showing that reverence because it's about the money. It's about what they can get out of it. It's not about worship anymore. And so when you see Jesus' anger, one who is furious at these people, his anger is justified because this sacred place is being tainted by the sins of many. Yes, that's where you came to ask pardon for your sins, absolutely. But people are there, temple authorities, Jews who, knew, who know better, are willingly doing this to this most holy place. Now, why is this so important for us, my dear friends, in the third Sunday of Lent? The Temple of Solomon, which unfortunately was destroyed, was very grand. I've seen diagrams, I've seen pictures of it. It was an incredible, incredible place, which was owed reverence to, from the Jewish people, because it had God there. They had things there from the Old Testament, manna, the staff of Moses, the Ten Commandments was placed in the Ark of the Covenant. That was where God was. But here, my dear friends, in our church, in many churches around the world, we have something much greater than the Temple of Solomon. We have a gift that is even better than the Ten Commandments, the man in the desert, and the staff of Moses. We have God Himself. We have God Himself, preserved in the tabernacle in the form of bread, the most holy Eucharist. We have God. Now, I think we all know that. 
But I think in knowing that here, at times we can become quite familiar with our attitude when we come into the church. Because when we walk here, my dear friends, we are walking into the house of God, where God resides, where He dwells. And in that, and because of that fact, the highest reverend ought to be shown. Now, this isn't just the distant God, my dear friends. This is the same God who came down on earth and is about to go and die for us. He's in the desert preparing for his death. And here, in a few weeks' time, he will die for us. And later, he will rise for us. It's the same God, the very same one. And so, the highest reverence ought to be shown here right now. And it's familiarization which really gets to us. I remember one parish that I was in during my time uh, in the seminary. I was helping the deacon at that parish to prepare for the baptism. And there's all these people started coming in. And it's a beautiful thing to see baptisms. But this particular parish had their tabernacle off to the side. And a group came in and started conversing. I have no problems with conversations. But he then put his elbow onto where the tabernacle was and was leaning on it like that. And I ran straight to him. What are you doing? You can't do that. That's a tabernacle. Oh, I thought it's just a nice gold box. Now, that's an extreme example, a very extreme example. But we think on our lives as well, when we walk into this church, what is our attitude? How do we respond? How do we act? Do we allow our conversations of the outside of our world take grips of when we are in here? Or do we prepare ourselves adequately to receive the sacred mysteries? Do we walk into here with absolute reverence when we bow or genuflect towards a tabernacle? That means something. When you see the servers walk in and process in, when they bow towards the altar, that means something. Even the cantors, when they come here, when they walk in with reverence, that means something. Because this is the house of God. And so we must have a very reverent attitude when we walk in. We bow, we kneel, we sit with reverence. Because we encounter God. We encounter Jesus Christ here. And so I ask you, my dear friends, over the next few weeks, when we approach the table of the Lord, do so with reverence in your heart. Know deep down, this is where God is. This is where I encounter Him. Much more than what the Israelites ever thought they could have imagined, we encounter Him here. Let's hold Him dear. Let's hold this place dear. Let's ensure that when we walk here, we encounter God, and we show it by means of our actions, but also in our hearts, pray adequately for the sacred mysteries. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and of Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the commands of the law are clear, but His mercy is great. Let us pray to our Father, trusting in His wisdom. For the Church, especially for Pope Francis, who is in Iraq at the moment, that we may grow in our awareness of our dignity 
as temples of the Holy Spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper appreciation of the commandments, that we may allow the wisdom and vision of the commandments given to Moses to form our conscience and guide our decisions. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For a cleansing of the temple of our hearts, that God will free us from all that enslaves us and help us to offer our self-sacrificing service to God and to others. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all bookkeepers and church business managers, that God will help them to be faithful and honest stewards of all the community's resources. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the elect, that God will cleanse their hearts, lead them into fuller faith, and deepen their desire for baptism. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who died this week, that they will walk in the presence of God for all eternity. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, in wisdom you have revealed your law. In mercy you give us grace to fulfill it. Hear the petitions of the people gathered in the name of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We give to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer, and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guide, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this 
is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension to heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners Hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say,
deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
as we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. Just a reminder that every Friday at 6 p.m. we do have Stations of the Cross, and you're most welcome to come join. It's a beautiful devotion to have uh, as we edge ever closer towards Holy Week. So I do invite you, 6 p.m. every Friday, we're just outside, uh, weather permitting, uh, to have the Stations of the Cross. And following on from that, there are uh, Lectio Divina straight after the station. So please come and join us. On Friday the 19th of March, is the Solemnity of St. Joseph. And to celebrate that, um, we as a parish have decided to do a novena to St. Joseph beginning on the 11th of March. Um, we will have uh, booklets provided, uh, but we will say the prayer in public um, after the rosary on the during the 12.30 Mass. Um, obviously on the weekend, we can't say it together. That's why we have booklets. You can go home and pray it yourself, but it's also a great devotion to have um, for, in preparation for the Novena to, for the Solemnity of St. Joseph. Um, today, we also have uh, two people here who are celebrating a very uh, special occasion. Uh, they're here among us today. Their name is Miguel and Perla. They are celebrating 60 years of marriage. What a very, very beautiful witness to the sacrament and vocation of marriage. And so I ask Miguel and Perla to stand and we'll, I will give you the best blessing today. Lord God and Creator, we bless and praise your name. In the beginning you made man and woman, so that they might enter a communion of life and love. You likewise bless the union of Miguel and Perla, so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness on them today. Amid the joys and struggles of their life, you have preserved the union between them. Renew their marriage covenant, increase your love in them, and strengthen their bond of peace, so that, surrounded by their children, they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm not usually a fan of applauses in churches, but I think I'd make an exception today. <laughs> Congratulations. One final announcement. You may have noticed a new priest on the block. That is Father Robert Reedling. He's the new dean and administrator of the cathedral. If you do see him, please say hello. He's not scary. He's actually quite friendly. So please make him feel welcome, as you have made all the priests here in the cathedral very welcome. Please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for God's blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.